Sony reached out to me to test out their Sony FX3 and make a couple of videos on it, I was super excited. For almost 10 years now, I've been shooting exclusively on the much larger, more expensive cinema cameras. And to be honest, I was kind of leaning in the direction of getting a camera system that could also spoil me with all of its feature-rich capabilities. Prior to receiving the camera, I reached out to one of my all-time music video clients to put together a shoot for the Sony FX3. The idea was to put the camera in a real working environment. I wanted to put together a shoot with a limited budget, which eventually turned into a music video that not only had a limited budget, but also a music video that had a very limited amount of time in which to shoot it in, and you'll see why. <laughs> arrived at the location, a discarded portion of a highway. Because there was no traffic, it allowed us to work efficiently. We started with setting up our car rig on the bonnet of the car. In camera, there are several different options for the focus modes to allow you to have a decent amount of control over the automatic elements of the autofocus. What I'm gonna do is put it into spot mode and I'm gonna move the box along to the corner of the screen where his face is gonna be. And that way, it'll just have his face in focus the whole time. And as you can see here, the camera just holds focus like a boss. The dynamic range of the camera allows you way more freedom with the shots that are typically challenging. And when I talk about dynamic range, I mean the detail this camera can see from the depth of the shadows to the peaks of the highlights. And with 15 plus stops of latitude on the FX3, you have so much detail to work with. If you want to benefit from the most information that your camera can deliver, all you have to do is make sure that you are shooting in one of the base ISOs. The rule is, in well-lit environments, shoot in the base ISO of 800, and in dimly lit situations, use the higher secondary base ISO of 12,800. When you're shooting, if you just lock in your ISO and adjust your exposure around that with an ND filter, then you know you are getting the best latitude out of the camera. Next, I wanted to capture some shots of the vehicle in motion. I have to be honest, maybe this music video was a little bit too gimbal centric. The geek in me was getting a real kick out of the fact that number one, I wasn't getting tired because the camera is just so light. Number two, I was doing ridiculous gimbal shots. For one of the shots, I was hanging out the back of a vehicle with a gimbal almost touching the ground. That I could never do on a much heavier camera. <laughs> And number three, with the autofocus mode set to wide, with face taking the priority, it allows me to focus on the gimbal movement and almost forget whether the subject was sharp because it was and is. As long as you can see the gray box encapsulating the subject's face, then you know you're good. For these gimbal shots of the artist, I decided to shoot some of the shots with the 24 to 70 millimeter more on the telephoto range of the lens. Look how it holds onto the focus when tracking inward or outward. This is something I could never do without a Steadicam operator to carry the heavy load of the camera and a focus puller to manually and wirelessly keep focus. So in terms of budget, it's cost effective because you don't need to fork out budget for additional people on set. You can just do it yourself. The camera is so light, just throw it on the gimbal. And the focus is so razor sharp, you don't need someone pulling focus. So at the end of the day for your production, it means more profit. So I did throw in a couple handheld shots. I was actually quite a bit nervous going handheld just because I know with a lighter setup, it's just more susceptible to your body's natural sort of body jitters. So to counter the weight, I just added more weight to the frame of the camera and I set the IBIS to standard. I set the IBIS to standard because I feel like the results were way more smooth and organic as opposed to taking your IBIS or in-body image stabilization and setting it to advanced. There are times where the IBIS set to advanced will really work for you. I just feel like 
If you want your handheld shot to have that breath-like feel, you have to set it to standard. I love slow motion shots. I'm often changing between frame rates, mostly between 25 frames per second real time and 100 frames per second for my super slow motion shots. So the easier it is for me to switch between these two modes, the better. And Sony has a quick function so that you can do just that. All you have to do is switch from movie mode, 25 frames per second, to S&Q or slow motion mode. It's as simple as clicking on the mode button on the back of the camera and scrolling down one notch to S&Q. Select it and there you go. Also, when you switch into S&Q mode, all your settings that you have preset for slow motion are activated. I have mine always set to 100 frames per second. At this point of the shoot, the sun was dipping quickly. Being at the mercy of the sun when you're running out of time is not only frustrating, but it's scary. There's no retakes. And honestly, who wants to do a reshoot and come back on another day? Not me. We are going to have the male artist and the female artist walking together along this road with the sunlight in the background. So we're really gonna test the dynamic range now of the camera. I have so much more energy than I usually have when I'm shooting on a much larger rig. So that's also really nice, it's, it's refreshing. Get some shots in the studio. Here we go. I'm sweating. Eh? Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Great workout. Yeah, tell me about it. Jeez, I like. Walk into the light. Okay, let's move. How did that go? Tell me all the dark and dirty secrets. Good. You know, like the thing is, when you're dealing with natural light and you've got clouds, you can't control the speed of the sun. It's always hectic. And with the way I typically like to shoot, I like to take my time with things. But when you're relying on the sun, it can be difficult. In a way, shooting in a controlled environment like a studio or in a house or where I can have controlled lighting, it's, it's easier in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, when you're outside, yeah, you're dealing with clouds and the sun running at its own speed, it can be a problem. But uh, I think we got, we got what we needed. We'll see. I just knew that I needed a little extra for the performances, not only to get more delivery of the lyrics, but also to break up the relatively straightforward music video and make it a bit more dynamic. In studio, I had the chance to test out the FX3's 10-bit color depth and see how it would allow me to manipulate the green of the infinity curve. The step up from 8 to 10 bits is a game changer because I had absolutely no problem in post. Because I had the two artists in frame, I wanted to have control over whose face was prioritized. So I used the touch screen to enable active track. This autofocus feature for me honestly just boggles the mind. Active track allows you to seamlessly switch between the subject's faces. Whenever you tap the touch screen, the camera holds focus on the point that you have pressed. This for me is insane. I'm used to manually focusing these types of shots, which are often full of human error. I wanna walk in the light. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I have loads of more filmmaking content on the way. So if you guys enjoyed uh, this video and you found it somewhat informative, please hit the like and subscribe button. So until next time, cheers.